Hello and welcome to Unfathomable Crimes. My name is Laura Smart and today we're going to go over the breaking news that Levi Belfield has signed a confession to the murders of Lynn and Megan Russell. The murders of Lynn and Megan Russell and the attempted murder of Josie Russell, it was a horrendous crime that happened in 1996. Lynn was 45 at the time and her daughter Megan was six. Josie was nine. She lived through this ordeal. And they were tied up and they were savagely beaten with a hammer while walking home from a swimming gala. It would be a year later when the crime was featured on Crime Watch, BBC programme that we have in the UK, and where it reconstructed what had happened and tips came in and Michael Stone was arrested. It turns out that he had committed a burglary near the scene of the crime and I think that's how it got tied in. It had been spotted in the area. Now, Michael Stone is no angel. Let's not get it wrong. He has criminal history of theft, criminal history of drugs, and he also accidentally killed his partner by giving him an overdose of heroin. There was also an outstanding murder in 1976 where a man was stabbed in a Maidstone park, which Michael Stone is the prime suspect for. But does that make him guilty of this crime? Levi Belfield, on the other hand, is a different kettle of fish to Michael Stone. His checkered past is a serial killer, a serial rapist, serial abductor. This is a man who has committed offences as far back as 1995. Between 2001 and 2004, he committed some horrendous acts, which thankfully he was caught for and now imprisoned. If you do not know who Levi Belfield is, he's probably more commonly known for the Millie Dowler murder. Millie Dowler was abducted in March of 2002 and her body wouldn't be found till six months later in August of 2002 in Yately Heath Woods. The previous day, Belfield had also tried to abduct another young girl. This wasn't the least of his crimes. He also murdered Marsha McDonnell, Amelie Delagrange, and he was also charged with the abduction and attempted murder of Anna Marie Rennie and also Irma Dragoshi. He has been linked to other crimes that have occurred but it's never been proven and that is the murder of Patsy Morris and the murder of Judith Gold. He was also linked to the Russell murders and that was part of an argument that Michael Stone's defence came up with back in 2013. Levi Belfield has a history of confessing to unsolved crimes, cold cases, including rapes and murders. And on being convicted and imprisoned for Millie Dowler's murder in 2011, he came forward with a bunch of crimes gave them to the police and said, these are the crimes that I have committed that you haven't solved. Now I have thoughts on this because the police went through all these cases, they investigated them, but they couldn't actually tie Belfield to them. So it was false confessions. It was wasting police time. Will this be the case in the Lynn and Megan Russell murders? Is he just trying to let Michael Stone off the hook? Did Michael Stone actually commit these murders? Now Michael Stone is in Franklin Prison currently, which is in Durham where Levi Belfield is in Wakefield. There's no way they would have been able to communicate one-on-one. -on -one. So why is Levi Belfield making this confession? It is true that he has for a long time been linked to this crime in some way and that Michael Stone is innocent. But with Belfield's previous history of confessing to crimes, I'm hoping this will get looked into very carefully. Now, in 2001, there was a piece of evidence from the Lynn and Megan Russell crimes that was found again, which was the lace that they were tied up with. And the defence team asked for it to be tested for DNA to see if this would exonerate Michael Stone. I can't find any information on if those tests were carried out or if it proved anything, but his appellate team has continued to work since his conviction to overturn this. And bearing in mind, Michael Stone was convicted twice. The first time he was convicted, it went to appeal and he got a new trial. The second trial, he was also found guilty, which is why he remains in prison today. So what of this news from yesterday that Levi Belfield has signed this confession? What happens now? Now, with regards to the Lynn and Megan Russell murders, Levi Belfield's ex-wife, claimed at the time on, on the day that Lynn and Megan were murdered that she was with him and it couldn't have been him. 
However, in February of 2022, Michael Stone reported that Levi Belfield had written a four-page statement confessing to Lynn and Megan's murder. Unfortunately, the detective investigating this stated that within the four-page statement that Belfield had written, there was nothing within the statement that wasn't in the public domain that Belfield couldn't have grabbed from newspapers or listened to on, on TV shows to make it stand out that he could have committed the crime. And with his history of confessing to cold cases, it obviously it, it sets up red flags. The police had also investigated this and they found no evidence that Belfield was linked. However, Michael Stone's conviction has been with the CCRC since 2017. This is the Criminal Cases Review Commission. Michael Stone has always claimed his innocence and he's been in prison now for 26 years. He has also said that in Belfield's confession now, the one that has been signed as of yesterday, April the 26th, 2023, it contains information that only the killer would know. Obviously, this is not public information yet, but it hopefully it's something that detectives can look at. A quote from Michael Stone, which came out this morning. I know that he, Belfield, did those murders. He's just revealed some information recently that's come to me through lawyers. It's information that he would only know if he had done it. He added, his crimes have hurt a lot of people, not just the people he murdered and their families. Other people have been blamed for Belfield's crimes. So what will happen now? Detectives are going to go over this and they're going to have to dig deep into this investigation again. Belfield's history of confessions won't help because it's been proven that he confesses to a lot of things with no actual evidence of him even being in the area. So all I can hope for now is that Sean and Josie, they get the help they need to go through this. They're going to need extra support. Josie survived the crime as, as such a young child and Sean obviously lost a daughter and his wife and they had to support Josie through her recovery after the attack. This is not going to be a pleasant time for them and if somehow Michael Stone has been wrongly convicted then this process is swift. So thank you for joining me for this update and I will hope to see you again another time. Bye, guys.